Introducing Be Heavenly, where nature meets purity. Our 100% natural virgin cold pressed oils are a blend of goodness and flavor. From coconut to sunflower, ground nut to sesame, safflower to mustard, we've got your culinary needs covered. Elevate your dishes with the essence of nature. Be heavenly, taste the difference today. Hello and welcome to Dr. VGP Talk Show. Hello and welcome to Dr. VGP Talk Show that reaches 42 million households, including 2 million households in Chicago land. This 64th episode of Dr. VGP Talk Show is a tribute to Sir Ratan Tata Ji, who we just lost recently, but whose legacy we are celebrating today and we will continue to celebrate every day of our life. America's salute to India's phenomenal son, Ratan Tata Ji. You're going to listen to 18 distinguished individuals from different walks of life who are going to share how the legend Ratan Tataji impacted their lives, their business, and their visions. You're also going to listen to some of these distinguished leaders in their fields share their personal meetings with the legend Ratan Tata, as well as his father, Naval Tata, and his stepmother, Simon Tata. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this historic episode, which we have brought together, bringing together 18 different personalities from different walks of life, who each of them are going to tell you how Ratan Tata impacted their lives. The end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say to you, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I traveled in. And every highway And more Much more than this And did it my way Regrets I had a few And then again Too few to mention I did what I had to do And so it through Without exemption I planned Each other course Each careful step Along the byway And more Much more than this and did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off More than I could chew But through it all When there was doubt 
I eat it up and spit it out. I faced it all and I stood tall and did it my way. I love, I've loved to cry. I had my thrill, my share of losing, and now, as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way. More than this, I did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the things he truly feels, and not the world. The record shows I took the blows and did it my way. Hello and welcome to Dr. VGP Talk Show that reaches 42 million households, including 2 million in Chicago land. In this historic episode of Dr. VGP Talk Show, we're paying a tribute, America's salute to India's phenomenal son, Ratan Tata Ji. Ratan Tata, as you all know, is a household name. Today we have gathered a set of distinguished people from different walks of life who exemplify and embodify Ratan Tata's principles and his success in business. So uh, we welcome our first guest, Ms. Rita Singh. So lovely Thank to you. have you in Dr. VGP Thank Talk so Show, Ms. Rita Singh. Rita Singh is the CEO of SRM International. She's also a current student of Harvard Business Management School. And she uh, comes, hey, was brought up in Jamshedpur, if those of you all know Jamshedpur in Bihar is the home of Tata Steel Plant, one of the earliest acquisitions of the Ratan Tata business empire. I know India is mourning the loss of its business emperor, Ratan Tata, his forefather, J.R. D. Tata, who industrialized and revolutionized the economic front of India. But today, here in America, in Matrix Club, Naperville, the third largest city in the state of Illinois, we are celebrating his life. And we would, are showing examples of how Tata's exemplify business leadership, philanthropic and humanitarian initiatives are influencing all of us here in America and beyond. Rita, tell us about your experiences where and how has Ratan Tata Ji influenced you personally as a woman business entrepreneur? Thank you, Dr. Prabhakar. Thank you for inviting me and giving me this honor to talk about him. So uh, being a businesswoman and uh, founder and co-founder of non for profit I definitely admire and I salute um, Ratan Tataji because uh, I grew up in Jamshedpur and I have seen that how humble and how great industrialist he is and his philanthropy Therapy is amazing. So um, my dad was posted, Mr. J.B. Singh, he was posted in Jamshedpur. Yeah, Mr. J.B. Singh was uh, retired as India's IB, it's called the Intelligence Bureau Chief. Yes. So he was posted in Jamshedpur as an assistant director of Intelligence Bureau, and he was uh, heading uh, South Bihar, and now which is known as Jharkhand. 
So um, I I remember as a child uh, that March third is Jamshed Ji's birthday, and uh, in Jamshedpur they celebrate it in a very big way. And in 1989, on that day, on March third, some fire incident, a big fire incident happened, and 50 people died in that. Despite of his dad's birthday, he didn't care, and he went to the hospital to see each and every one personally. That really reflects Ratan Tata's G puts himself, him, people before himself yes. and celebrating his yes. father's birthday. Totally that's why they are known for the biggest donor of India. I don't think so that anybody has donated and done for the normal people in India how much Tata Group has done. And that because of definitely Ratan Tata Ji. And I feel very proud and I'm very humble to say that, that I'm a student of Harvard Business School doing OPM. Excellent. And he is, he was an LMI of that business school, the, the Harvard Business School, that program, the OPM program. And at Harvard Business School, we have a beautiful building called Tata Hall. Yes. And it's donated by Tata Groups of Company. And if you go personally, you will see that that is the most beautiful in the campus. Yes, I'm told that the Tata Hall, which Rita Singh is referring to at the great Harvard University, is the crown jewel in the whole campus. Yes, absolutely. It's one of the most, most architectural beautiful. wonders. And, and it's also the happening place where international business is transforming the landscape of the global world. Yes. Thank you so much, Rita Ji, for joining us today and sharing your thoughts on India's legend, Ratan Tata. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank Lovely you. having Lovely you on our show. We have with us Mr. Paul Leong, the council member of the city of Naperville, the third largest city in the state of Illinois. Welcome, Paul. Thank you so much for joining us at the Matrix studio here today to talk about Ratan Tata. He is India's phenomenal son. He was more than a business titan. He was the heart and soul of modern Indian industry, a man whose vision reshaped not only his company, but also our country of India. Paul, you know that we have a lot of Indian Americans in your city of Naperville, and you have been very supportive of all the Indian American initiatives. At this time, you, what are your thoughts about Ratan Tata and his legacy? Well, thank you so much for having me here today. Ratan Tata's legacy is one of empowerment, especially for youth. He understood that the future of any nation lies in its young people. And through his leadership, he created opportunities that allowed countless young minds to dream big and achieve greatness. From educational scholarships to mentorship programs, he was deeply committed to nurturing the next generation of innovators and leaders. As a leader in youth empowerment, I have been inspired by his relentless focus on education and skill development. Ratan Tata taught us that investing in young people isn't just a duty, it's an investment in the future of society. His unwavering belief in the potential of India's youth will continue to inspire young leaders for generations to come. He didn't just create jobs, he created a future. You're absolutely right, Paul Leong. Ratan Tata was a leader who showed that numbers and success isn't in numbers, as you all know, but in lives touched and in opportunities created in kindness shown. Thank you so much, Paul, for sharing. And I'm sure his legacy will continue to live beyond the city of Naperville. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. When Ratan Tata passed away, it wasn't just the business world that mourned. It was the entire nation of India and beyond. From CEOs to factory workers, from politicians to everyday citizens, all paid tribute to a man who's embo who embodied humility and wisdom. When me and my production team was looking around to see who would at least least resemble and embody Ratan Tata's simplicity, business acumenship, our team zeroed in to none other than Sanjeev Singh, who is the CEO of Azar Digital, who is with us today. He is a visionary leader at the intersection of technology and business, an accomplished author, speaker, and a dedicated community leader who has got the traits not only of conquering businesses. He just recently opened a huge sprawling IT campus in Delhi, but above all, he's very humble very simple and very humanitarian and he gives 
beyond his mesha. And those are some of the traits, and that's some of the legacy of Ratan Tata Ji. On this salute, what would you like to talk about the great Ratan Tata? First of all, thank you so much, Dr. Rahul, for having me um, on this talk show. I'm a former employee of Tata Group. Wow. So I, my early career, my philosophy and business ethics came from the Tata philosophy. Okay. So, and I'm also a fellow alum of Harvard Business School. Uh, so what I learned from him is that the purpose of business is to make some profits, but at the same time, touching as many lives as you can. Absolutely. And that's what he right. taught us that, you know, that how many lives you can touch with your contribution to the society, to the nation. And uh, I think he was the first businessman, I would say, who really started the practice of ethical business practice. And he proved that being ethical still you can build such a massive global empire that which each and every Indian feel proud of just saying that Tata is from India. So that's my salute to the great man. You said it so well, Sanjeev Singh Ji. You know, his Tata Computer Services, TCS, has 165,000 employees with offices in US, yep. India and Europe. Thank you, Sanjeev Ji, for joining us in this America salute to India's phenomenal son, Ratan Tata Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have with us a powerful woman, a proven woman, and a woman of excellence, Madhu Upal. Thank you so much, Madhu Ji, for joining us at this America salute to the living legend. I should correct myself to the legend, Ratan Tata, but whose legacy lives within us. Wouldn't you agree, Madhu Ji? I absolutely. Dr. VGP, I am so honored. I feel so humbled that you asked me to say something about uh, Ratan Tata. Now, um, I never had the privilege of knowing him, working for him, any capacity. But what I saw, uh, we learned from his example, what he set as a standard for us to follow. His, um, he taught the world about vision, about doing, accomplishing things, but being humble at the same time. It's a great message for our business community that dream big, but it doesn't mean that you, you know, you begin to think, take yourself too seriously. So I, I really was impressed the way, first of all, he was unafraid. When he ventured out buying um, big companies like Chorus Steel, I think it's a Dutch company, and then he bought T Tetley, he bought Land Rover. These organizations, it showed a lot of vision, a lot of courage in what he believed in. But he did it with a humility. Somebody asked him once, I believe, you know, how do you feel that uh, an Indian owning a British company? And he said, it's, it's, I am doing it, what I want, feel can be done for my business, for my community. And I appreciated his philanthropic, <laughs> what he has done as a person like him who has given away most of his fortune or who gave away most of his fortune to causes like health, Education. As a former educator, I truly appreciate his dedication and devotion to education. His legacy, he's no longer with us, and we lost a great uh, human being, but his legacy will live on through his work. You're absolutely right. Ratan Tata, true to his roots, was a philanthropist at heart, and through his Tata Trust, has directed immense resources towards education, healthcare, and rural development. Thank you so much. Madhu Palji, I know as president of the Alliance of Indian Americans of Naperville, you will continue his legacy here and through all your impressive initiatives for the community. Thank you for joining us so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. We have with us a rising star of Chicago land, the rep state representative Lashan K. Ford, who is running for the 10th term in the Illinois General Assembly. He's the chairman of the Illinois Higher Education Appropriations Committee. State Representative Lashan Ford has always been in the forefront of having his inclusive business leadership, not only for the minority communities, but also to make sure that everyone has their place in the table and have a fair share in the state's economic decision-making process, as well as in the giveaways which the state gives. He has pioneered some great legislation which has never been done before 
and he and all of you would know that he was very touched when he heard about R Ratan Tata's passing away as he was an icon not only in the industries but he was also Ratan Tata as you know the visionary between Indica and Nano you know Ratan Tata's desire to make affordable cars for the Indian consumers led to the creation of Tata Indiga and Tata Nano if you all know those are very familiar cars in India and he has also been a multifaceted business house which most of you all know and he studied in Cornell University and initially had the dreams of settling in the United States. Uh, Representative Ford, so good to have you. You're an educational side and you enable businesses to grow, especially minority businesses to become business empire. So thank you for joining us all the way from Chicago here today to tribute him. And Ratan Tata and, uh, attributes most of his success to his U.S. education yeah. in Cornell University and later on in Harvard University. So what, did, what would you say is the legacy of Ratan Tata from your perspective? Well, I would tell you, my condolences go out to the international community on such a big loss to all of the sectors that make the world um, go around from business, nonprofit, human rights. Um, we in Illinois send our condolences. And as a state representative and the chair of higher ed appropriations, it's, it's critical that the history of Tata isn't forgotten and that the proper history is recorded and continue to be passed on. And so I thank you for making sure that the world recognizes his legacy. You, Representative Ford, you're very right. If you recall your recent trip to India, you stayed in one of his hotels, the Taj group of hotels in Goa. You know, that he had so many different interests in his business empire and hospitality industry was foremost there. He also owns one of the premier hotels in New York, his group, the Tata Group, as well as in London. I remember the hotel and I have to tell you, it's very unique for an individual to be able to touch every spoke in the will. And he has done that. And to um, leave a legacy like that is something that, you know, not only the Indian community diaspora could strive for, but the international community too will see him as a role model. You know, like our um, Nelson Mandela, yes, and our Dr. King. You're very correct, uh, Representative Ford. You said he leaves a legacy, and what is a legacy? Legacy is a lot more than your name in the Forbes list, which he was already there. It's how people remember you after you're gone, how they talk about you, like we're doing now, and how they narrate stories about you, and that's why Ratan Tata stands out and he will always stand out and his legacy will live on you know the tata group has 30 different companies and their principal promoter is an entity called tata sons whoever leads tata sons is the top boss and that's who ratan tata was thank you so much representative Ford, for joining us today we really appreciate your presence thank you for the opportunity thank you we talked about the tata sons and the 30 different business empire and groups we have he has conquered. Here we have a young lady, woman entrepreneur, who was an IT consultant with Deloitte for several years. And then she ventured into becoming a franchisee and leads the Midwest operation of one of Tata's jewelry brand. As all of you know, Tanishk, it's one of the world's largest jewelry brand. And she was the one who pioneered and opened the first Tanishk store jewelry store in Midwest in the city of Aurora, the second largest city of the state of Illinois. Krisha, you, you are such a unique blend. You know, you have your IT background as long with you entered into entrepreneurship and one of Tata's famous Tanish brand. Tanish is known as affordable jewelry. And we'd like you to share a few words now of how Tata attracted you and Ratan Tata and how you're going to keep his legacy alive through Tanishk. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. VJP, for having me here today. Tanishk, a Tata product, is India's largest and most loved jewelry brand. And it is my family's privilege to bring this offering to the Midwest. 
Ratan Tata, a man who inspired millions. He needs no introduction. He was a visionary leader known for his humility, innovation, and philanthropy. Under his leadership, not only did he impact the Tata Group, but he left an indelible mark on the Indian industry. He turned the Tata Group into a global powerhouse. But he was also known for saying, never forget your roots and Absolutely. always be proud of where you come from. And with that in mind, with bringing Tanishk to the Midwest, we bring a piece of culture and a piece of home closer to our hearts. In the words of Ratan Tata from 2006, he says, business as I know it places one great demand on you. It requires you to self-impose a framework of ethics, values, fairness and objectivity on yourself at all times. It is philosophy such as this that has made the Tata name synonymous with trust. I'd like to leave us with his words and honor his legacy. Never underestimate the power of fairness, kindness, and compassion in your interactions with others. So well said, Krisha. Could you repeat that loud and clear? <laughs> Those words of Ratan Tata Ji it should resonate in every one of everybody's ears. It's so important. Could you please? Absolutely. Uh, slowly and nicely so we could all soak it in. <laughs> Absolutely. In the words of Ratan Tata, never underestimate the power of kindness, empathy and compassion in your interaction with others. Krisha, who is the lead for the Tanish Midwest Jewelry Store, where if you can, if you take a look at Tanish products, uh, it's, a, it's a, Tata, a Tata company group. It also, you could have trust and you can shine and quality at affordable prices. And Krisa has one, uh, being an IT entrepreneur and a Deloitte consultant, has studied the market and chosen to lead Tanishk in the Midwest. And so you know in good hands. Thank you. Today is the Vijay Dashmi Dasra day, the busiest day, I should say, of the month for a jewelry store owner and for having the Tanish CEO of Midwest here with us who's leading the operations is really a testament to Ratan Tata's legacy. Thank you so much. Krishna. Thank you very much. My honor and in the name of Ratan Tata, a privilege. Thank you. Thank you, you know, Ratan Tata, after taking over as chairman of the Tata Group in 1991, he transformed Tata Group into a global powerhouse. Under Ratan Tata's leadership, Tata acquired international brands like Tetley, T, Jaguar, Land Rover, making India a force to be reckoned with on the global stage. We have with us Dr. Ranganathan Chandrasekhar, a business school professor from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Dr. Chandrasekhar, could you tell us how uh, Ratan Tata's business philosophy is in your learning of the business management techniques? Thank you so much for joining us on a busy day like today. We'd like to have your perspective on Ratan Tata and the business management schools. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vijipa, for uh, inviting me and letting me share some of my thoughts. One of the key lessons we teach in a business school is all about customer centricity. We talk about how to place customers at the heart of everything that a business does. And in a lot of companies typically make a lip service to the customer aspect of, uh, which is at the core of a business school curriculum. And, you know, we all know how Ratan Tata placed customers at the heart of well, everything yeah. when he actually thought of the nano project. Correct. It is the most affordable car that mankind has ever made in the world. So the famous anecdote is that, you know, he saw life revolves in motorcycles in India. As you know, there are four or five people who go in a motorcycle. He saw a family of four traveling and that kind of triggered his thought. And he came up with this idea of, you know, giving a car for exactly one lakh rupees, which is like $1,200. You absolutely. don't even get a scrap car in US. Yes, absolutely. That's Not even a used car. Absolutely. Thinking about customers and putting them first and, you know, making a product and making an entire business out of it. Uh, I think he's he was a standing example of putting customer at the heart of everything. So that's the most important lesson any business school student could learn from Ratan Tara's life. You said it so well. Yes, the humble beginnings in education of Ratan Tata has transformed India into a global powerhouse. Dr. Chandrasekhar Ranganathan, I think that's a lesson in itself. I think 
your business schools, management schools to teach a chapter or a book on Ratan Tata's business acumenship, where he put, like you rightly said, customers first, had humility, and he was had affordable. And everything what he did had a human touch. Absolutely. That made him stand out. Thank you so much, Dr. Ratan. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have with us 17-year-old Hannah Leong, the high school, uh, high school junior from Naperville Central High School. Hannah Leong is a, a student activist and a youth act a leader in the city of Naperville and beyond. She is the president of the debate club. She is the member of the student council. And she is always interested to learn about legends. Uh, Hannah, what has inspired you about this great legend, Ratan Tata. What have you learned from his journey? Well, as a young person who's trying to figure out what I want to do with my life, it's so inspiring to see how he's contributed to his community, how he's contributed to his country. And I think his philosophy of simplicity and humility, that's something that we can all learn from, not just me as a student, but Neighborville as a city and as a community. You, you're very right, Hannah. Hannah said it right. You know, Ratan Tata was known for his honesty, integrity, humility, and simplicity, and accessibility. It was like the uh, Professor Ranganathan just said that he got a car manufactured in India for just one lakh of rupees, thousand two hundred dollars. He wanted everybody to get the best of life. Thank you so much, Hannah, for joining us. I know it's a busy Saturday, and we appreciate you coming in to the studios to be joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We just heard from 17-year-old Hannah Leong from Naperville Central High School. Now we have 76-year-old Ramarao G, who worked for the National Seeds Corporation of India for 20 years and over, originally from the state of Andhra Pradesh, India, who is today in Naperville. Ramarao G has been following Ratan Tata the Tata Sons and Tata Trust. And today, he's the proud father of young entrepreneur, Vinos Chanamalu, who embodies and exemplifies Ratan Tata in his own small way. He's an IT, uh, IT giant, has a hospitality industry. He has also ventured into having a Mall of India. And just recently, he also founded a Sri Ashta Lakshmi Temple in Naperville as thanksgiving to Almighty God for blessing him with such a vast business empire. He could not join us, but he told us the best person to speak about Ratan Tata, I'm not fit, is my dad, Ramarao Ji, who's here today. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Welcome you. And he's going to talk about an aspect that none of us have heard so far about Ratan Tata and Tata Trust. Ramarao Ji. Oh, just, uh, you see, Ratan Tata, I know him just uh, well in media and uh, while reading and his history from the childhood. He has struggled so many things and became uh, a good educationist. And afterwards, he back to, he has uh, educated in uh, America also. He's, uh, he had done his uh, uh, engineering. Yes. And uh, after that, for some reasons, he has left to India. And there he has joined in the group of Tata. And where it is not uh, in small uh, establishment, he has made the biggest development and ex uh, extended throughout the world. Most of the more than uh, 80 plus countries. And he has made so many uh, uh, ways of developments in India like that. Uh, uh, in IT sector, in motor sector, in food sector, and uh, trustees he made and uh, he has provided the medicines to the poor people who is uh, not able to purchase some mandal places he has made on uh, trustee medical provision and on call he has supplied the medicines to the needy people. It is most important. Nobody has done that so far in India. It is the biggest achievement. I know him. He has uh, struggled very hard and uh, he has uh, made the people how to work more and to develop the business. 
and uh, to oblige the people um, it uh, very simple way and uh, he is very good person who uh, will be always in our eyes uh, whenever we will uh, see his photos on media and uh, on paper also um, i tribute to him on behalf of my mall of uh, india uh, which is belongs to my son you know sir molu and his friend ajay sunkara uh, thank you mr prabhakar for inviting this ramana ji thank you so much for coming yes ratan tata was deeply committed to india's growth and he is consistently supported national in initiatives like setting up cancer hospitals like you said delivery free delivery of medication to rural okay. villages and uh, relief efforts during national crisis like covid-19 pandemic thank you so much ramarao ji we so great not to only cancer that. but other other uh, diseases also has provided the medicine yes yes and his can tata cancer hospital in bombay is very famous uh, very saving famous. many lives today very treating very lives thank you so much ramarao thank, thank, thank you thank you sir we have with us the american multi ethnic commissions commissioner for membership and outreach ms mohita sukmar who is an it engineer and a community leader today with us she is the daughter of a retired brigadier from the indian army and we wanted her to share her insights on ratan tata ji how he put india on the global stage and how did he improve and strengthen the global relationships between india and other countries mohita Good afternoon, Dr. VJP. Absolutely a pleasure to be here, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about the legendary Ratan Tata, sir. Um, he's a powerhouse, a legendary name by itself. He's one of the most respected Indian businessmen, um, embodying unique uh, blend of um, humility, visionary leadership, and um, a deep humanity. He um, elevated Tata Motors or Tata Groups to being a global powerhouse today. and at the same time redefined what uh, leading with integrity means you're absolutely uh, right he if you remember a couple of years back he had tata nano some of our friends and peers spoke about tata nano as well but um, his vision was to bring mobility and access accessible to all of us and then he went on to acquire land rover jaguar tetley t and so many such brands uh, bringing indian entrepreneurship on a world stage Uh, with such monumental um, achievements he stands out to be a leader with unwavering commitments towards social good um being fair and ethic ethical he um he believed that the power of business can uplift society and today his trust his tata trust actually champion that by funding um, education rural development and healthcare and much much more um so he's been a leader in in every indian's heart every indian's heart as a, a compassionate and a very uh, full of deep kindness um leader leader uh, to end it all i would say that ratan tata is a philanthropist uh, who continues to contribute uh, his contributions will continue to inspire generations to come uh, symbolizing that um, great leadership um serve the greater good mohita you said exactly about his values of integrity humility and his relentless drive to uplift the nation through his philanthropic attitude uh, lots of people are talking about ratan tata you know ratan tata was a bachelor yes. you think him being a single man contributed to a great extent to his philanthropic uh, ventures because there's a lot of comparison today in the media about ratan tata and other business giants why haven't they done half of what tata has done for the community and uh, not to be gender specific or insensitive to any one gender uh, is the women like your wife do you pull your husband's purse strings that's what i'm getting at uh, so do you think that had an effect on a man's generosity and his willing to his philanthropic No, That's I would good. say that his personality it comes from within his upbringing his education all these elements led to him being what he is or was and what he's contributed to the world and to our uh, country India so I think it's coming from where what he had learned what he had se seen from 
around him and what he wanted to give back. So I think it's it's his personal uh, thought process. I don't think the other elements, they're all uh, external so, factors. So you you feel, you know, there, there's so much of talk in the media and the social media. So you see the influence of women on Tata, this is the result because he had zero influence of a woman. <laughs> Would you agree with that? I, I also heard that he was very close to being uh, getting married a couple of times. And yes, uh, yes. Unfortunately, or fortunately, yes, whatever yes. it may be, uh, it didn't happen. But we got a legendary leader. Great. And India is very uh, thankful for that. You're right. Ratan Tata is known for his values of integrity, humility. Yes. And his incredible drive to relentlessly support those who need. Yes. The less fortunate. Support. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much, so much Mohita, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank doctor. You. Mm -hmm. right. We have with us a rising star in the state of Illinois, Kadir Zakria. He's currently the CEO of Uplift Array, an organization for mental health management of students going to universities and colleges. You know, there are a lot of challenges they face. They don't get the right courses. And he is navigating that in a pioneering entrepreneurship. And he's also Kadir Zakria is a well-known uh, community leader for the Indian American community from Naperville. He also comes from the same state of my, of my of me from Tamil Nadu, India. Welcome, Kadir Z. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And he's going to share his thoughts of how Ratan Tata's impact beyond the boardroom and how Ratan Tata G has been building initiatives for the community. Kadir. Absolutely. Thank you, first of all, uh, Dr. VGP, for doing this tribute. It's a great honor for me to be here with you. Um, Today, as Dr. VGP had mentioned, right, we are honoring not just a business titan, but a man with a heart and vision that transformed many lives. Absolutely. Right? And, um, you know, in his own words, what he had actually said is businesses need to look at interests beyond their companies, but towards the community they serve. So his leadership was not based on just building businesses, but was about building a better and a more humane world. You're absolutely uh, right. As a community leader, as Dr. VGP mentioned, right, um, I've firsthand seen his impact of his philanthropy. I have seen the lives that he has uplifted using his quiet generosity and also the impacts on the lives that he has done who are invisible. So the key, what I actually see from Dr. Tata is, um, or uh, Ratan Tata ji is looking beyond the interest of the company, but focus on how do you actually serve the community for a better, you know, building. So that's where I want to take an opportunity to thank Ratan Tata for his extreme achievement in driving the communities and empowering them and driving education for the underprivileged and also uplifting the in uh, the people who are invisible you're absolutely right kadarji you said it, he nailed it on the head he was known for his simplicity his philanthropy and humanity which touched many lives absolutely. in so many ways and opportunities created i mean it's phenomenal simply uh, phenomenal absolutely you know i want to thank um Ratan Tata for kind of showing us the path of service and humanity you're absolutely right. I hope other business giants emulate him, at least try to do 10% of what he's doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll all be a better world. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Kandar. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you on our show. Thank we you. have with us Tommy Tahoe, a young Chinese-American entrepreneur who also exemplifies and embodies Ratan Tata's G's multivarious business empire. Tommy Tao, in his own Chinatown business empire, is the CEO of a Noble Design International company, which specializes in commercial interior design. He is also a contractor who builds uh, special speciality nightclubs, hotels, restaurants, and commercial uh, buildings. He also is an owner of a string of hospitality, uh, entertainment related industries. Today, he's joining us to tell us about Ratan Tata and how he has learned about him and how he has impacted his growing business empire. Thank you so much, Tommy Tahoe, for coming all the way from Chinatown here and joining us. It's a pleasure. 
It's a real pleasure to have you on our show and we'd like you to say a few words about what you're doing and how Ratan Tata's legacy will continue in Chinatown, United States and beyond. Yeah. Welcome, Tommy. Yeah, Doctor. So it's my honor to uh, be part of this tribute to uh, Ratan Tata. Um, he made a huge impact um, on real estate and business yes. work. And he represented honesty, excellence, and innovation. Absolutely. Honesty, excellent innovation. Uh, young Tommy Taho, a Chinese American entrepreneur, says that what he saw in Ratan Tata's initiative is honesty, excellence, and innovation. Very well said. Yes, yes, yes. But um, his contribution not only changed the industry, but also created a lot of opportunity for many people. Great. Yes. Yeah, uh, right. uh, on behalf of real estate and business, business community, I want to um, express my deep gratitude to his lasting legacy. He will be always be remembered. Um, I think that's it. Great. Tommy has said that Ratan Tata Ji's legacy will, li will live on and will always be remembered. His support of startups, showing his forward thinking approach of Ratan Tata's has made India and the world a great economic place. Thank you so much, Tommy Taho, for joining us and sharing your insights of how Ratan Tata has impacted your business career. And we hope you will be the new Ratan Tata of America. Thank, Thank you, you Tommy, Thank you. and wishing you all the best. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We have with us Padma Shri Dr. S. V. Rama Rao, a connoisseur of arts and culture, who's going to throw some insight about Ratan Tata Ji's promotion of arts and culture and brilliance in the arts field. Dr. Padma Rao Ji, we are so happy that you are joining us today. You got the Padma Shri in, yeah. from the Government of India, the highest civilian award yes. uh, from when Prime Minister Narasimha Rao was the Prime Minister. Which year was that? And that is 2011, I think. Not 2002. Uh, two or yeah, yeah. two, I think. In 2002, and he's also fondly referred to as Picasso of America yeah. because you have such great oil paintings which are today featured in most of the big galleries in Europe, London, and across America. Yeah. Right, uh, Padma Shri, Dr. Rama Rao? Yes, sir. Museum of Monarch, New York, here in. Little louder? Uh, Museum of Monarch, New York. Okay. And Returned Albert Museum, London. Okay. And the National Gallery of Australia. Excellent. And uh, New Zealand and Seattle Museum, like that. So, so here we are with the Picasso of America. He was also recently, last year, the government of Andhra Pradesh, a state in India, gave him one of their highest civilian awards yeah. with a cash prize of 10 lakhs. 10 lakhs. And uh, Padma Shri, Dr. S. V. Ramarao, thank you so much for coming here and blessing us with your presence yes. and give us your insight on Ratan Tata's legacy. Yes. Ratan Tata Ji is... Uh, he is Ratan Wait. Tata, uh, a legendary man and uh, he was an icon, a great philanthropist. He is a brilliant and compassionate and uh, excellence in his life and he uh, he's, he didn't build a company he built a family fantastic yeah. i mean you said it well ratan tata did not build a company built a family one of the first persons who was being the tribute of how his family concept he was yeah. concerned with each and every one of the employees there are so many stories now yes. being recalled about ratan yes. tata ji please continue padma shri yes sir dr ram ram um, the uh, the people who worked in his company felt they were respected needed and or uh, they contributed their might with uh, love. And uh, um, Ratan Tata Ji is known for his brilliance 
and ethics and he he um he not only built the company he has a motto to inspire the people and make the he felt that uh, one has to contribute and better the world than what he found it and that's why he is loved everywhere in the world and in india there is india felt a huge loss of one of his greatest sons demise and his legacy is immense in india and even though we miss him is way he gave us the guidelines how to run the company and how to love the country and the people his legacy we remember forever yes dr padma shri sv ramara was talking about how ratan tata ji empowered the young entrepreneurs to take charge of india in this digital age and beyond thank you so yes. much padma shri dr ramara for thank joining you. us and thank you for your blessings it's and kind of i know that legacy of ratan tata ji maybe you can release a series of paintings yes. about yes. his uh, his values thank yes, you so much thank, thank you so much thank you our next guest is a very special personality who is the cultural ambassador for india in america he is also a business entrepreneur i know him as a journalist when he was the editor in chief of spotlight indian newspaper over the years today he is the proud founder and owner of this matrix club one of its kind multi purpose cultural center matrix clubs we are right here at meg's lounge which is a state of art dining fine dining facility with a bar we have a huge matrix room which can seat 1500 for cultural concerts we have a theater to seat 300 people we have an art gallery we have a yoga room what else did i forget madan ji the recording lab <laughs> the recording lab welcome madan ji thank you for finding time to be on our show as we pay tribute to ratan ji and uh, you could in your own words you could tell us what ratan tata meant to you and the world ratan tata was a huge role model for all of us growing up in bombay uh, where we studied our management and then we had our first initial steps into the world of business uh, we all looked up to him uh, for the way he uh, grew in in the business uh, within the tata empire and then he took over after uh, jamshed ji and then the way he built this company up into um, a company which was a source of pride for the entire nation because right throughout his career as an entrepreneur what could not be um, uh, uh, what was always visible was his pride in being an indian wherever he went Uh, he felt he was an indian first and then whatever he did i think he promoted uh, through his business and through his ventures he promoted uh, the cause of india and uh, he, he uh, without saying he was the biggest role model we all had and when he passed it was like somebody very near and dear who passed away and then couldn't help shedding a tear for him because uh, visualizing india without a ratan tata being there is 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 very difficult when we go back home what what would you say would be one of the legacies that he's leaving behind for young entrepreneurs like you see the biggest thing which uh, ratan tata professed was there is no substitute to hard work mm -hmm. and then there is no substitute to sincerity of purpose so, very well said in madan kulkarni's words he says ratan tata has emphasized over and over again there's no substitute for hard work and there is no substitute for sincer sincerity of purpose there is no substitute for sincerity of purpose could you clarify and throw some more light on sincerity of purpose what do you mean by that uh, you find a purpose in life yes okay and then which is based on the right ideals of wanting to do good for the people around you wanting to make the environment better around you and in the profit uh, in the process make progress yourself so it's not the other way around okay it's not make profit for yourself first 
and then think about the environment. It, it, it is always the other way around. And that was what he exemplified. See, Ratan Tata Ji, as you all know, it's very famous that 66% of the profits went back into uh, charity and social development and all these causes. And for somebody like him and for an organization like his to do that is a huge thing for the Absolutely. country. Because anything in India will go. The name Tata stands out because literally you grew up using all the products which they brought in into the country. And then the profits and then the returns they made out of it is being recycled back into the country. Uh, almost 60% of that for, again, the redevelopment of India. So which is a phenomenal uh, thing to do in this day and age. Madanji, thank you so much for coming and sharing that great insight of how Ratan Tata Ji has been personally investing his profits into innumerable community initiatives. Yes, not only himself, but he has made the Tata Group invest back yes. in, into the community of India. So, That's very unique. Yes, yes. And then the way he went outside of India, and then he brought over, he bought over some major corporates, right from steel to automobiles. Remember, he bought over Land Rover. Yes. And it was it was a matter of huge pride for all Indians when he did that. That's and the way he did that, and then the way he kind of uh, trusted himself and then trusted the company to come out of its uh, hole and then uh, stand back on its feet, which is a phenomenal example of the industriousness of uh, Ratan Tata. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Badanji, and we're sure. sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Well, we heard so many tributes paid to Ratan Tata and his legacy. We have with us, let's hear an attorney, talk about an attorney and a businessman who is one of the most successful business entrepreneurs, who's basically an attorney by profession, who's practicing law in the state of Illinois, and he is currently an in house counsel for a large corporation. He's also a business entrepreneur with remarkable acumen, running a couple of successful businesses from hotels, gas stations, jewelry stores, and is deeply involved with various community services. He is also an active member of the oldest Federation of Indian Associations, 1980. Please welcome Thomas Abraham. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Thomas, really for joining us. Thank you. I know that you did meet the great, legendary Ratan Tata. Tell us about your meeting and what was the impact? Yeah, the this was I think late nineties. So as a young that time, as a young man, I was also wanted to do something good in business. So we used to look at those days. It was Tatas and Birlas. So and that was a period when uh, Tata bought the most iconic uh, Tata Sierra, and we were all fond of uh, big cars that time. And uh, those days, uh, the market we had only small cars, P Fiat and uh, the Ambassador, if I'm not wrong. So. Um, it was, if I uh, vividly remember, uh, it was in early 90s, I was checking into Taj Hotel. And there was this gentleman standing in the counter talking to the staff there. I immediately recognized him. It was Sir Ratan Tata. So I went and greeted him and very humbly with all humility, he reciprocated back to me with a, with a greeting. So wow, that was a great yeah. historic, historic opportunity. Uh, yeah, I, I was the first time I'm seeing him. And uh, so I've seen many people in my life who are not even near uh, Sir Tata, but they have an attitude. But this man, You're right. such a tall figure, has reciprocated back to me. I'm being a small person. So that was a great impression I'd taken. That was the first and the last time I saw him. So how, how did that impact you positively to grow into a business entrepreneur that you are today? I know you were early days, you were teaching in Delhi Law University. You're practicing law in Delhi. Yes. And then it, it had a great impact on me. And those days, I also had a company called Ravtom International. We were manufacturing garment and exporting to different parts of the world. So this has given me that humility pays a big way. Integrity and honesty also pays a big way. So I started following him and studying about him and how he uh, uh, donated and how out 67 oh, percent of his total income he was giving a charity yes so if you see the uh i also wonder that being such a rich man why his name is not being figured in the first 200 or 300 list so the, later on uh, with study i came to know that 65 percent of total income he was doing as a charity without uh this is saying that if you donate by your right hand your left hand should not know and he was following the principles so 
Great. Nice. Thomas Abraham G, thank you so much for joining us and giving us insight. I mean, you will be cherishing the moment that you shook hands with the great legend Ratan Tata in thank 1990. You. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. VGP, for giving this platform. In fact, I'm looking for a platform like this to pay homage to this great man. Thank you so, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. We have with us Kalya Dr. Kalyani Gopal, the founder president of the Safe Coalition for Human Rights from Maryville in the state of Indiana. Thank you, Dr. Gopal, for joining us all the way from Indiana in this special America's salute to the India's phenomenal son, Ratan Tata. Dr. Kalyani Gopal is also the current president of the United Nations Coalition of Psychology. Mm -hmm. She's a consultant psychologist and she is one of making difference in people's life by combating international and global human trafficking today. Dr. Kalyani Gopal, give us the insights of how Ratan Tata's leadership and his legacy has impacted you and the work, phenomenal work you're doing in the state of Indiana and in Delhi, India. I think he his um, Ratan Tata Ji's work is just so phenomenal because he not only impacted India but he also impacted the whole world. So his focus on uplifting the underprivileged, his cancer institutes, every aspect of human life has been impacted by his work. There is literally no aspect that has not been impacted by his work in, uh, in globally. So, for example, with Ford, when he first went to Ford and he had this car and he had these ideas, Ford said, no, we don't want it. He went back home, he created his own, and then years later, he ended up buying Ford's failing cars, yes. which were the Jaguar, you know, and so he's, it's just in impressive, his courage, his determination. I think for all of us who are born and raised in India, post-independence, for us, his legacy is so profound because for us, he represents India in so many ways. Uh, because we weren't born during the British Raj. We didn't see what happened there, but we have parents who were born and raised during the British Raj. Um, and also being a Fauji person myself, what he did for the army trucks is profoundly moving. My father used to say when he was alive, he said, if it wasn't for uh, Sri Ratan Tataji, you know, we would not have the army trucks we have, the superior capacity of the army trucks that we have today, because he literally outfitted and specially made those trucks for the rugged areas in uh, the Himalayas. So his work is so profound. His reach is so profound that I am grieving that I've never, ever met him. No, don't know him at all, except through what my father has said, who actually met him. I think the grief that we all feel is a global grief. It's a global sharing of community grief over his loss. And our hearts go out to his family and his loved ones. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalyani Gopal. I mean, you said it so well. Uh, you brought out a different aspect, which Ratan Tata G was able to equip our army trucks with special wheels so that they could protect themselves and go into uh, my, uh, terrain, which usually the trucks won't be able to right. plow through. Right. So thank you so much for joining us and we really appreciate you and we wish you, I'm sure that Ratan Tata's legacy will be carried on in your work, important work you're doing in trying to combat global human trafficking. Absolutely. His work with uh, children and girls, especially and women who are being trafficked and he hel helping them and uplifting them in so many ways is just incredible because that's what we are literally benefiting from uh, in our work with Safe Coalition for Human Rights and the United Nations. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalyani Gopal, for joining us. Thank you. Joining us this afternoon is Mr. Said Mukaram, a prominent community activist and an Indian American community leader, I would say not only in the Midwest, but throughout America. Thank you so much, Janab Said Mukaram ji, for joining us. And you know, Said Mukaram ji is a, one of the most sought after general contractor today, uh, not only by our community, but the hospitality industry. He's a civil engineer and he's also worked with IDOT and CDOT. And he is very, he's one of the things he's doing is he is especially made a very big community initiative where he raised three million dollars yes. to build a Muslim burial ground, cemetery. a Muslim cemetery in 
Illinois State. We salute you, sir, for that. And um, recently, when Sri Rahul Gandhi, India's leader of opposition, was in Houston and Washington, D.C., Janab Said Mukaram personally accompanied him and met him and talked to him. Today is here to give us the impact of what Ratan Tata's work and legacy is especially felt to the Muslim community at large and to the minorities in, in India and beyond. Said Mukaram Ji. Yeah, first of all, I would like to mention, it's mentioned in the Quran, Kullu nafsin zayakhatul maut. Every soul has to taste death, no matter he's young, no matter he's middle class, no matter he's old. But after you die, what will come with you, the good deeds will come with you. And Ratan Tata, sir, used to do a lot of good deeds for humanity, irrespective of their race, religion, and different ethnic background. He used to help the Muslims, he used to help Christians, he used to help Hindus. He never used to say all the human beings he used to help. And he used to uplift the communities from the grassroots. Yeah especially the people from the poor communities. He used to help them. He used to make them the partners and he used to help them. There was a story of Ratan Tata Ji. He, he, one of the journalists asked him when you were very much, uh, when you were very, uh, were a very happy this day of your life and you felt very happy. He said, first of all, I would like to accumulate the wealth. Then I was happy, but I was not comfortable. Then second of all, he said, I, I thought of accumulating the very expensive things of the world. Then he accumulated the valuable things, but still he was not happy. Then the third time uh, he thought of uh, building a big, big project. So he had 95% uh, of diesel he used to supply throughout India and Africa. Apart from that, he was uh, uh, having the steel factory, but he still he didn't feel happy. One of his friends, he advised him to accompany him and donate the wheelchairs for the people of poor people, handicapped people. Then he donated 200 chairs, uh, wheelchairs. Apart from that, he asked the, our Ratan Tata Ji to accompany him to give the wheelchairs to the poor people. When he went there to the blind, uh, to the blind people and the disabled people, when he gave the wheelchair, he felt the glow and happiness on the faces of the children as if they are doing the picnic and roaming around and having fun those things when he saw he felt the happiest day of his life and lifetime he said that he felt happier than any other thing he achieved in his life when he was living one of the child grabbed his leg and he was not releasing his legs so he asked him to release the leg then the child said I want to see your face so that when I go to heaven, I want to see the same face in heaven that the child has. So the people, when you help their humanity, irrespective of the race, religion, and different ethnic background, then God will help you and God will, will give you respect and he's the inspiration and we have a great loss. And we there is a highly one in a billion person like Ratan Tata Ji Bonds and he has made the impact on Muslims, he has made the impact on Christians, he has made the impact on Hindus, he has made the impact on all the Sikhs and all the religions on this world so that we can take this legacy and we are inspired by his work. He was a very generous person, he was a legend, he was a dynamic person, he was an ultimate person. We want the millions of Ratan Tata on this earth and he is the instrumental to bring me here even though i was very busy but uh, because of the work of ratan tata jeez for the humanity it's a great loss for india and there is a no replacement like ratan tata ji so we would like to make supplications and duas may god bless us like millions of ratan tata jeez so that that india can grow and the world can live in peace and world all the poor people can be happy we want everybody to be happy, irrespective of the race, language, religion, different ethnic background. We want everybody to grow, and especially the poor people. And Ratan Tata Ji was a ultimate personality and inspiration personality, and he was a legend. He was a generous person. May God bless his family with patience and our heartfelt condolence to his family members. Janab Said Mukaram Ji, wow, wow, what a wonderful, eloquent tribute you gave and showed how Ratan Tata Ji has impacted your life, 
the community in general and the generations to come. Thank you so much, Mukaram. We miss him a lot. Yes. And we will today to God that is God gives patience to his family members, our condolence to him, and thanks for inviting me today to come yeah. here. Thank you so Dr. much, Ajit, sir. Thank, thank you, you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Ajit Pantji, we are so happy that you could join us today in America's salute to India's phenomenal son, Ratan Tata Ji. As you all know, Dr. Ajit Panth is the president of the U.S.-India Chamber of Commerce, one of the leading organizations, trade bodies in North America. He is also the founder of the first time ever American Association of Engineers of Indian, of Indian origin. He is the founder uh, of the American Association of Engineers of Indian origin, a organization two years ago which was founded from his home. And uh, he is also one of the co-founders where history was made for the first time of the GSA India at 75 Expo in 2022, which was the first diaspora organization outside of India to celebrate India's 75th anniversary. He has a very checkered career history. He is, uh, I would say, he worked in the State Trading Corporation of India as one of the general managers. State Trading Corporation of India is one of the biggest trade bodies to do foreign affairs, imports, exports for the government of India. And after that, he had the opportunity of being the vice president of ITC, one of the biggest business empires in India. Prior to that, he had the opportunity of being a commerce attache in the Embassy of India in Moscow, Russia. Welcome, Dr. Ajit Pant. He's going to share some very powerful stories of how he met Ratan Tata Ji in person, discussed with him some of the industrial policies, how he met Ratan Tata's dad and Ratan Tata's stepmom. Let's welcome Dr. Ajit Pant Ji. It's your turn now. Take it away, sir. Thank you, Dr. Prabhakar. It's, you know, you are a uh, a visionary in, in promoting uh, U.S.-India relations and that is why we are in contact and uh, thank you for inviting me to this expose on uh, the life of, uh, of uh, Mr. Ratan Tata, a pioneer again in the modern India. Yes. Uh, he has, I would say that he is an icon not only for India, but now, as we reflect on his, on his uh, uh, work across the world, across the globe, I think he will be known as a global icon. This, I am, uh, without doubt, I want to say this, that he will be recognized as a global icon and not only as a prominent industrial, a global industrialist, but also a humanitarian, beyond peer, uh, beyond comparison. I have had the privilege and, uh, you know, as I look back over the years, uh, it, it was a rare opportunity that I got to meet with him. I was posted in Russia with the Embassy of India uh, as the uh, in charge of uh, commercial uh, promotions, commercial products promotions, and I had brought a delegation uh, led by the uh, Minister for Trade uh, for, of Soviet Union, uh, actually at that time. And this year is 1980. And wow. I, I had brought a 10-member team and I had planned their visits to different uh, industries across India, from Delhi, Bombay, Pune, uh, Bangalore, uh, Calcutta, uh, and uh, in Jam to Jamshedpur, we had gone across all, all uh, different industries and met with different uh, leaders of industry at that time. And the Russian team was very keen with the meeting the Tata Group. For them, brand and name was even more important. So we were able to fix a meeting with. Uh, we could not fix a meeting with uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, J.R.D. Tata. He was too busy or I think he was out of the country at that time. And we got to know that our meeting is confirmed with Mr. Ratan Tata. How old was Ratan Tata at that time? I think he was in his 
early 40s oh, okay. at that time and uh, or mid 40s perhaps uh, and and he was not very well known in the tata group as such except for his name he was then uh, in 1980 the managing director or president of a tata company a very smaller tata company called nelco Nelco. And if you know Bombay, it was that factory was based in Chakala near Andheri, and we had to meander through the streets and get to his factory, and he was waiting for us. He came out to greet our Russian team and the minister. He took us around the factory, and was very, uh, you know, innocuous about it. He did not pretend to be a, a Tata. person or you know that kind of a thing he was humble he was polite he asked all the right questions and answered all the uh, in in a very normal way and we had about a 45 minute uh, to one hour trip we had tea with him and uh, and we left uh, so that was one memory that has etched in my mind absolutely and, and, uh, the thing and, but down the line uh, when you I, met him that time dr pant did you imagine that he would turn out to be such a business magnet with such a humility attitude and philanthropic to be very honest and candid i don't don't uh, think that i had that impression at that time yeah that's what i wanted to know i uh, he was not a person that uh, that uh, at that time he did not re- he was seem to be a more of a normal person he did not seem very ambitious yes, he did correct. not seem very driven at that time but he was doing a, his job at that time i agree he, he, you know and 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 this perception perhaps was also created uh by 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 the environment uh, because the company that he was leading was a very uh, low figure low entity in, in the tata in the tata empire and at that time there were very big satraps mm-hmm. the kings uh, that were holding fort in different units in the tatas and we can talk about that but i wanted to uh, to bring out and i was reflecting on this yesterday after you know i got your invitation to talk that i have had also the privilege of knowing his father oh, mr naval tata naval tata had again come to Russia to Moscow, and at that time the Soviet Union, uh, sometime in 1981, uh, or uh, yeah, sometime in 1981. He was then the president of the Federation of Indian Employers. Oh, Federation of Indian Employers. Employers, and there was another gentleman that I think you know. His name is Mr. B. K. Modi. Yes, Mr. B K Modi BK. was the vice president of the Federation of Indian Employers, and Mr. Naval Tata, and I have this, these, and there were three other people with them, and I had the occasion to be wow. so closely in contact with Mr. Naval Tata. He would sit across my desk in my office, wow, and uh, with the with the team, and I when I briefed them about you know what appointments we have had for them, and I took them around in my car. uh particularly mr naval tata and mr modi we would go out for dinner together but a very he he oozed uh, you know mr Happy naval is. tata uh, was was d- definitely vibrant that time vibrant and he was leading visionary uh, leading a number of uh, high profile companies in the tata group he was also the vice chairman of the tata group so that was uh, one uh, side of it but looking back i have had the privilege of dealing and and uh, and discussing business with mrs simon tata oh simon is- tata was the founder and visionary uh, she had set up lakme lakme so was a tata group lakme is the tata group wow i know for something i'm learning yeah. today so she had uh, started this opera- because we, she, see she was a very very um, very graceful and very Uh, dominant personality you could make out she was a swiss lady 
uh, and lived all her life uh, under life that after marriage in Bombay. Of Ratan. And she was the stepmother of, of Mr. Ratan Tata. But, uh, you know, there was not much interaction between Mr. Ratan Tata and Timon Tata. Tata right. uh, she was independent, running, independently running uh, LACME. And uh, uh, right from 78 onwards, I've had the privilege uh, for about uh, five years in uh, between 78 to 82 of knowing her, meeting her regularly. She would visit uh, Rus Russia for or Soviet Union for discussions and negotiations. And we were, uh, as part of the embassy and part of the STC group, promoting her uh, products there. Subsequently, many years later, in, in, in 1990s, I had the privilege of heading ITC again yes. in Russia. And uh, again, we, uh, they approached ITC to be our, uh, to be their distributors in Russia. So we could not be distributors, but we became buyers of their products and then distributed. Okay. And uh, so we had a lot of discussions, negotiations, and uh, very, uh, she's been to my house, my home Same for dinner many times. So that was a very, Unique. Uh, oh yes, yeah. Position. And, uh, did you get a, any chance to have a personal, just like you had with um, Ratan Tata's stepmother, Simon Tata? Do you have any interactions, business deals with Ratan Tata himself? No, to, no. To get an insight into his no. leadership Sub -subsequently, skills. Subsequently, uh, no. But the having had met him so long ago, I used to follow him, and uh, you know, uh, be 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 aware of where he's going and where he's heading. And uh, so it was in 1991, he was appointed as chairman. The, as the chairman of the Tata Group. Why in 1991? JRD was still alive. But JRD, was, his grandfather was still alive. His, no, uh, his father's cousin actually. Oh, J JRD uh, was his father's, uh, Double Tata's cousin. Double Tata and JRD Tata were first cousins. Uh, were cousins, yes. Oh, and, and JRD Tata didn't have any children. They didn't so have any children. Took Naval Tata, his cousin's son, and that's how it was. Yes, okay. and uh, so why 1991? Because the Tata group, the Tata sons, the right. Tata trusts, mm -hmm. were celebrating hundred years of its formation wow. in 1991. Wow! So that was the, the reason earmark. that JRD appointed. Uh, Ratan Tata, Ratan Tata as the chairman uh, to celebrate 100 years yes, uh, of that. That was the significance of that. And uh, and when he took over, I was very closely monitoring uh, his progress and all that. And, uh, you know, I there was a lot of, at that time when he took over, a lot of politics in the within the Tata group. They were not expecting that Ratan Tata, Tata would be appointed. Be there was Rusi Modi at Tata Steel. Yes. Now, Rusi Modi, one of the most powerful people in as the Tata group. Of, yes, as the you know, Steel CEO. And, and he was there. Uh, there was a gentleman called Sait in uh, Tata Chemicals, another big uh, profile person. Uh -huh. uh, so, the different telco people had Mulgavkar and all that. But Mr. Ratan Tata had something with his patience and with his gentle attitude, he was slowly able to uh, to get all the these people open. and the organizations on their side. Even if the, for example, uh, first he was able to uh, sort out within months of his takeover, a big strike at a telco plant in Pune. Mm. And, and uh, that was a major uh, win for Mr. Tata. In within the Tata group, he, he single-handedly sort of took over uh, the discussions with the unions and settled that. And uh, thereafter, uh, he was able to resolve the Tata Steel uh, situation. And Rusi Modi uh, had to, he was fired actually. If you go back in history, uh, okay. he was fired and uh, had to leave. Uh, so much others were right it, it, but, it is. but the, the credit to him is that it was very without ruffle without creating any ruffles he was able to get people on his side 
that was his i would credit him with that kind of a vision and that kind of he was able to get, unite people and he had the communication yeah. skills and the leadership skills yes. to bring them together that's that indeed a very important strategic skill you must have to build a business empire or any empire for the matter of that that was so right and his vision if you look at it that be big and be bold so very nice. you know that is the tata group they are big and they are num uh, and he had he he had declared that we will be number 1 or 2 in the world in some of our in, uh, selected okay. segments in steel they are there yes in software they are number 1 yes. in hotels they are there Service. in in, uh, uh, in now in in uh, consumer goods their uh, titan and tanishq brand and, yeah. have t- are t- not only o- across india the jewelry brand throughout the world yes you're right uh, so i mean his his uh, when he took over in 1991 the turnover was 10 bill- 10 billion dollars and when he gave up in 2012 first time when he gave up it was 100 billion dollars wow the turnover of oh of my god group. so that is significant uh, and and at that time we have to realize that was the pre internet era so to say Correct. you know where when yeah, he, exactly. he got this thing going i want to um, because we are in the us and discussing this in sh- sh- chicago i want to highlight uh, his association with the us correct see he 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 his final years of two years of schooling were from a new york school some regency school in in new york cornell university so then he went harvard uh, into uh, cornell for his first for his engineering actually here again he has himself written that he wanted to do architecture but his father was very keen that he do mechanical instead so he enrolled for mechanical and over a period of time was able to convince his father to do architecture that, and then he shifted his major to architecture so that was his style without ruffling feathers he was able to communicate seamlessly uh, seamlessly and and uh, without uh, you know hurting people or or antagonizing anybody so that was his biggest uh, trait dr pan so, what could you say if there are three things which attracts you about ratan tata would you say they were the three major prime uh, things for his success what would those three things be he was a gentle giant gentle giant you know that is uh, so uh, because one of the most powerful people in business and industry in india we don't realize that even in the us uh-huh. he has made impact he has been the largest donor that's true to to cornell yes one of the largest donors to harvard to harvard they have set up a, a genetics uh, institute a genetics research institute at the university of california in san diego mm-hmm. uh he has an uh, research and and design center named after the tata group at mit uh-huh. uh phenomenal okay. and coming back to chicago now he has some connections with chicago guess what he was for many years <coughs> on the jury panel of the pritzker architecture award wow. now this is one of the most coveted architecture awards and uh, in the world in the world and he was on the on the on the jury panel for the pritzker award uh he was on the board of uh, several companies in the us uh, including uh, alcoa uh, the aluminum giant but he, in chicago he was the on the board of montelis 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 is a very the, famous uh, is, is the new name for craft the montelis yes. group uh, oh, over yeah. craft ah. and they were they renamed it uh, montelis 
Thank you so much, Dr. Pant, for bringing the Chicago connection of Ratan Tata. <laughs> you seem to, you can write a book on Ratan Tata's legacy. And it's very significant that right here in Chicago, that the craft group is on the board of directors. And the board of directors, the Prisca Architecture Prize, which is a world-renowned prize, is actually equivalent to the Nobel Prize in Architecture. Yes. And he is on the, served on the jury. So that's uh, wonderful. And thank you for taking your time. You gave us such an insightful, meaningful uh, uh, fireside chat as if we were meeting Ratan Tata and Naval Tata and Suman Tata and the Lakmi. I mean, you gave us so much of information, uh, Nuggets, and we're grateful for you. And I'm sure our viewers will, will enjoy listening to all these things which you have not heard of, especially the Chicago connection. Uh, yeah, there is another uh, Chicago connection. Uh, one of his very close friends happens to be an American in Chicago. Oh, I great. cannot take his name, but he's he was he's retired now. He's the CEO of uh, of Underwriter Labs. Wow. Uh, okay. They had a very very uh, fantastic uh, okay. relationship. Okay, great. Right. Thank you Thank so you. much. So much was lovely Thank having you. you. Thank, you, Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have a very interesting personality here, young IT entrepreneur, who is also. Um, an active member of the NRI Seva Council who conducts the famous Srinivasa Kalyanam festival here in the Chicagoland area. Sharath Yatapu, thank you so much for joining us, Sharath. And he's one of the leading Telugu American community leaders in America today. His soft nature, his humility some is sometimes very much like Ratan Tata. And uh, so we requested him to be on our show because we are trying to get people who could exemplify some of the qualities of Ratan Tata. Our previous guest was so enlightening, Dr. Ajit Pant. He was an embodiment of business and he shared all the insights of the Tata's business empire. So let's hear from Sharat Yatapu. Uh, what's, how did Ratan Tata impact you and how did he inspire your life and journey? Um, I did my... Um, M.Tech uh, Masters in uh, IIT, Chennai. After that, I joined uh, uh, Siemens Power Engineering. And then uh, in a year, I got the opportunity to work in Tata Company, Tata TCS. Or Tata, Tata Consulting Consult Service. Services, Very good, Tata yeah. Consulting. Okay. So I joined in um, uh, Tata Consultancy Services in 2000. I worked for uh, five years. And during our time means he was young when we joined i means when he took over he was like 53 54 years old as a uh, chairman of the company and uh, there were other companies means uh, tata groups where there are ceos um, uh, he understood the corporate culture and he wants to bring a big change in the corporate culture so he made it as a centralized um, um, corporate culture uh, to the Indian uh, companies, group of companies, Tata companies especially. And um, even uh, when I was there in the company, uh, TCS also went uh, to public. And uh, he, almost 50% of the shares went to, uh, uh, designated to Tata um, uh, uh, Trust actually. So you can see a um, lot of wealth which was... Um, uh, moved to uh, Tata Trust and he was doing so many rural activities, uh, empowering um, uh, women, women empowerment, uh, in, uh, means uh, empowering students uh, and they were like supporting so many activities uh, in India. So, and also he makes sure that um, uh, uh, corporate culture um, uh, is like um, uh, means <clears throat> uh, he he uh, brought like uh, corporate culture and um, uh, efficiency at all levels of the organization, and he streamlined the organizations. And Do you uh, think, Sharat, that uh, his uh, Ratan Tata's success was in his business empire grew and doubled because he took care of the human resources. The, he took care of each employee like a family, took care of the benefits. He was not so much interested in the numbers and profit making of the company, so much as so inputting the profits back into the company for the improvement of the welfare of the employees. 
Yes, even uh, when I joined, like uh, even TCS salary structure was so good, and um, uh, like that's what he um, interested on employees, and uh, um, he was making sure that um, it was wealth is distributed uh, to the society and the employees, and it's not two times or three times. I think it improved uh, the, uh, uh, if you see the growth of the company, Tata Groups is like tenfold. Yeah, exactly. It's like Dr. Uh, Ajit Pant said in 1991, when Ratan Tata took over the chairmanship of the Tata Group, it was his, the turnover was $10 billion. But in 2012, when he left, it was $100 billion. That's what exactly. That's very He's good. like um, uh, G. Uh, Jackwell. Yeah. Uh, so he was like that, and uh, also bold decisions to take over uh, uh, Jaguar and some Britain British companies. Uh, that was a pride moment for entire India um, because uh, uh, an Indian entrepreneur was buying a big companies um, uh, of Britain Brit British companies. That was a proud moment for uh, Indians, Great. and especially as a mechanical engineer, we like even I was like uh, uh, amazed uh, buying all the Jaguar and Land Rover, and it is now uh, Tata Brands. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sharath yeah. Tapu, for joining us today. We enjoyed your insights into Ratan Tata Ji. Thank, Thank you. you. Introducing Be Heavenly, where nature meets purity. Our 100% natural virgin cold-pressed oils are a blend of goodness and flavor. From coconut to sunflower, ground nut to sesame, safflower to mustard, we've got your culinary needs covered. Elevate your dishes with the essence of nature. Be Heavenly. Taste the difference today.